had this is the Cotopaxi volcano. I think Cotopaxi volcano has been very important in my childhood because I've seen it in the horizon every single clear day in my hometown in Quito, Ecuador. And it is a really important volcano, beautiful and relevant in the country. This is the geology history report of the Cotopaxi volcano, the highest active volcano in Ecuador. Its structures, formation, and the influence on geography, society, and the future possible hazards that will make cause this volcano. The Cotopaxi is a beautiful, imponent, and symmetrical volcano laying in the Andes. It is part of other 47 volcanoes in Ecuador, but it's also very, very special and differentiated from the others. It has been studied through the years like, from scientists like Condamine, Humboldt, or Wolf. It is special, specifically located at in the latitude 0 degrees 38 seconds and longitude 78 degrees 26 seconds. So, as you, as you can see, it's really close to the equator line. The line that divides the north and southern hemisphere. It is just 50 kilometers to Quito, the biggest city in Ecuador and the capital. It is very distinctive because it has a conical form and a massive 22 kilometers diameter. It is considered as the 26th highest volcano on the world and it rises almost 6,000 meters above sea level. It is part of an Andean ridge, a chain of uplift that goes from Colombia in the south to Chile in the north. It divided, this ridge is divided into western and eastern cordilleras by Cotopaxi is located in the western cordilleras. The valley, the valley between those cordilleras is a large and growing population, specifically in Ecuador. It is also like in a major field sited in the Pacific Ring of Fire. The formation. The formation of the western and central coast of South America and the Andes is the formation of, of the Cotopaxi. The mountain belt is located in a subduction zone uploading during the epigeny movements of the Andes. It is made by deposition of sedimentary coastal under extrusions and it is studied by extrusions. In a specific, specifically, it is, it is formed by the Nazca plate that moves eastward, subducted under the South American plate. That is considered as the Benio zone. It is still considered as an active and with motion subduction zone and it has moved around like 6 to 9 centimeters per year. The central area of the range it has paleosaurolites, schist, gneiss, and magnetites, the sub subordinates quartzites and amphibolites. The horizontal labyrinth accompanied in, in the cortopaxi is also affected by Cretaceous planetary intrusions. And finally, the deposition on top of it, it is made by Pliocene and Holocene stratovolcanic products. The symmetrical cone of and shape of the volcano is made due to the combined layers of tephra altering with layers of this volcano from the others is made by the combined layers of tephra altering with layers of viscous lava flows, which shape the very steep faces of the of the volcano canyon. This result this is also a result of the major debris avalanche, destroying the previous geomorphology of the canyon that that event happened 5,000 years ago. The tectonic interaction following the position and erosion made that this volcano has 21 main tephra beds organized in plain parallel successions, separated by some erosional conformities due to the lava and, and the large flows. This volcano has three main drainage. It has one to the north, one to the west, and one to the east. One to the west has four central streams, which, con which combine to form the Kutuchi River and flow through the Tacunga Valley a very populated zone that links to La Tacunga City. To the east is Hatunyaku River stream, which then leads to Napo River, which go to the populated Amazonian lowlands. But the most important and biggest is one to one to the north, because this stream flows the Chillas and Tumaco River east to Quito, the biggest city of Ecuador with more than 3 million habitants, and this stream is 80% of the water supply of these cities. So, the stratigraphic record of the eruptive periods of the Cotopaxi start in the interbed lavas on top of the Tacungas formation. Those lavas have an age of 1.4 and 1.7 million years. So, those are the oldest positions known of the lavas both from the Cotopaxi. The volcanic deposition goes on top and it goes younger as it goes upper. The early history of Cotopaxi it can consider as real eruptions. There is where you find in the formations the Barrancas, real light series, and the biotite tripria, bearing tripria, all ash flows and dome collapse, and the dome collapse and growth. Those are dated between 560 and 420 million years ago. And those are also the cause of the formation of the recent Cotopaxis edifice. 
The most relevant eruptive of Rheolitic was the Colorado Canyon episode. This episode was considered as the last Rheolitic breach of flow of the Cotopaxi, and it happened between 4,500 years and 4,000 years ago. It was a major pumice rapidly fall with several arch flows, and the most important pattern, the large collapse of the northeast bank of the Cotopaxi cone, and it created the actual stratocone cone and the symmetrical cone that we noted today. This important eruption is dated to be 560 and 420 million years ago, and it formed the present formation of the Cotopaxi Canyon and Edifice, so it is the most relevant eruption and it is considered it is named Colorado Canyon. It is an all scene really breach of flow nature, and it happened around is a, is a pressure a process that happened around 4,000 years ago. It was a major pumice a pili fall with several ash flow and the more, most important thing the large collapse of the northern bank of the Paxis cone, which created the actual stratocone that we know we know now. This massive volcanic eruption produced around 1.2 kilometers km cube of dense rock. It triggered also the Tijos Valley Lahar, a gigantic debris flow. This, this is considered as the largest debris flow in the northern Andes on the whole scene, and this whole process is considered to happen every, every single 10,000 years, so it is a cycle. The river system floated all the way to the Pacific, 320 kilometers, and also all the way to the Amazon, 130 kilometers, so it was massive. To sum up, this Colorado Canyon event is the last real deep eruption of this volcano, and one of the largest Saharas in the world, which has embraces and replaced all the energies of the Cotopaxi. Since that, that event finished, the Cotopaxi was mostly undecitive activity. This undecitive nature means that it has more silices. That means it has around 20 to 20, 70 to 75% of Celsius. The realistic and anesthetic remodel and cycle that the Cotopaxi has it is considered to happen every single 360 years, with some disruptive eruption cycles also. The present character of the Cotopaxi is just anesthetic, and since it, there's human record, so there's just a human record of the anesthetic character of the volcano. The human record goes from 1534. It was a really special eruption back then because it, it was dated and registered by Sebastián de Benalcázar, a Spaniard that was trying to conquer the Indians and the Indians and the Incas groups in Ecuador. It was really influenced this conquering because the Incas retract when they saw the volcanic eruption was happening, which as also is a, a suggestion that the eruption had happened in, in the area for a long time. After that registered eruption, it happened a 200 year pass, and the next eruption happened again in 1742. The next eruptions were really big and they were again characterized by the big lahars and then by the deposition of white pumice and black scoria units on top of the flanks of the, of the volcano. There were 13 main eruptions recorded by humans and the most violent were in 1744, 1768, 1877 and 1904. That's why it is called that the Batacunga Valley as famine because there's a lot of depositions on top. Now to build all this activity and this of the volcano, it is expected to have a lot of hazards, right? The northern, the northern foot of the Cotopaxi down cutting and deposition is where all the mainly hazards are encountered. There's due the, to the type of construction of the edifice after the Colorado Canyon event, so there's a dangerous big ice cap in the northern plants. In these same northern plants, they have two major streams, which is the Rio Pita, we have an Omar discharge of about 1 to 3 meters, cube meters per second, and Rio Salto, which has even less than 1 meter cube per second, which has really really low discharge and flow. The pita collects water from the east and northern flanks, and drainage products from the flanks of extinct, and also drainage the product from the flanks of extinct volcano Sinchalao. The pita systems to the south, divided then to the south by the Tumbuyaco Canyon, and created the Rio Napo, which flows all the way to the Amazon region, and also created the Rio San Pedro, which then goes through the densely populated Chillos Valley, that has around like 1 million inhabitants. Moreover, it is divided again to create the Esmeralda's river stream, which then goes to the Pacific Ocean, so it's a really, really a broad system. This long stream path is around 326 kilometers, and it has in its path a lot of evidence the position of past lahars and other flows. The lahars from, from Cotopaxi are considered as non-cohesive. Those type of lahars means that they have a low amount of clay. That low amount of clay makes them that be more gravel fractions, about like 25 to 80 in weight percent and sand fractions. And those type of fractures make it more granular, the people will make it more gigantic lahars. From those gigantic lahars, there's a 
in the last over 170 years there's three main that we have a registration from. One of those is the Caldera La Harra deposition, which we know that they have a discharge rate than 40,000 meters square per second. And we can consider kind of what the normal discharge of uh, beta, that it, it was just one to three meters squares per second. Other of the Harra's were one in 1877, which was like 2,000 meters per second, and the one in the 18th century, which was 300 feet, uh, 3,500 meters, meters square per second. We know that the glacial cap have been reduced all these years to the actual glacial cap, but in the studies they say that even with the actual glacial cap that is 14 kilometers square in area and 0.7 kilometers cube in volume, it is sufficient to make a really really big lahar that can cause immediately harm to around 100 people around the volcano. And that's the main difference between the previous volcano, the previous massive lahars and the actual lahars. Is that now there's a lot more growing population and growing constructions around the, the drainage pad and, and the Cotopaxi per se. Uh, uh, an example of this is the power break region of Nayon, but it is actually really near to Quito. It is 70 kilometers downstream the region, but in there's there's the position of previous Lahar that way they were very big and they were like 18 meters above the stream base with velocities of 15 meters per second and big discharges of 15 thousand meters square per second so you can you can see how much damage will get that will cause you so after hard start there will be some types of prevention right there's estimated after all the studies that the recurrence of eruption is 170 years based on these last 2000 years reports likely then it is likely to happen when there's a big population of people around it right there's a population of around two to three million people that might be hazard if the volcano eruption is really big it is considered that the, if the eruption is bigger than a polar level eruption with the, with the actual ice cap, it will be a norm, like, as an the as the one described before. And it is already known that Kodopaxi has shown air volcanic eruptions and uh, average from 4 to 5, so it is very probable that that will happen. That's why since 1977, it, it has been monitored by the Escuela Politécnica Nacional of Ecuador and by the Geophysicist Institute. This includes long seismic period network, the formation monitorization, constant geochemical measurements, and the temp temperature service doing all the time to see any changes that might be connected with an with a eruptive event. In 1978, three generation of hazard maps have been distributed to local official business people and national authorities. Uh, they have guide they have been used them as widely as they should and the population have to just spread it out all through the plans of the of the volcano. This cycle of 100 to 100 to 160 years period and it can, it can be connected to the last eruption because last eruption was in 1877 and the next active stage started in 2015 with a differential of 137 years so it's very probable that the next eruption will be really near the present or, or really close in the future and this all of these studies about the hazards show that this volcano is not time to just study as very important in the formation for the past that it should be analyzed and monitored in our present because we need a prevention system of all those people that live really close or depend on the water or, or the soil that's near the volcano. The harm will be instantaneously and not, for, not just for a small amount of people but of millions of, people, of millions. Because the pyroclastic flows eruptions can also like have a huge damage on agriculture that is a very very common on the sun near this volcano. Just one centimeter of ash deposition can kill instantaneously the vegetation and the and contamination of the water reservoirs that are a lot of people dependent for. And it has been also registered that this reach of ash flows and contamination can up reach up north to Colombia or up west to the Oceanic Pacific, even 500 kilometers away. This is really hard to manage man, because people get really close to the volcano due to the rich soils it can offer and the water supplies, but those are also like the way the volcano can harm the people back. That's why it should like be organized and promote a sustainable and achievable project. Like there was this idea of the barrier systems to minimize the impact, just as are like the ones that are in Japan that are called sabot dams. And there's a no sustainability of use those in this case because the water economy drainage can afford it. The drainage from the crater of the volcano is so spread out that it will be really difficult to see a way with engineering to protect it. So they only the like solution that the scientists and people that know about the topic is either hit up with it, the sun near the volcano, which is really impossible because people are already established and attached to the place, 
and the next will be just keep monitoring Kotopaxi as much as they can with any type of survey as they are doing right now and design and educate the people so they can be ready for any evacuation plans and realize that they might not have an eruption in their in their life but that's a very likely thing to happen while they're living there just right now.